guys, I hope you can still hear me. Today we're here at Georgia Burnett College where some students are going to talk about an HPV project. Um, I'm right here with a, a Georgia Gwinnett College student. Excuse me, what is HPV? So from here, we're going to go back to the studio where Professor Kian, which is a AMP professor at Georgia Gwinnett College, she's going to explain to you more about what HPV is. Let's talk about sex, baby. Let's talk about you and me. Let's talk about all the good things out the back. Good morning, class. Last class, we talked about sexually transmitted diseases. Today, we're going to be focused on one common, the most common sexually transmitted disease, which is HPV. It can be classified into two categories, high risk and low risk. High risk is oncogenic, which is associated with cancer. And low risk is non-oncogenic, which is also known as work causing. HPV targets the stem cells of the squamous epithelium. This affects the immune system and the reproductive system. HPV is a virus that is transferred primarily by skin-to-skin -skin sexual contact. So don't have sex. Okay class, so we have a representative from WHO today that will be explaining more about um, sex ed and HPV. Hello class, my name is Christiana. I'm a rep from the World Health Organization and I would like to add more information to what Professor Kiani just talked about, HPV. As she said, it's a sexually transmitted disease and it's caused by a non-enveloped double-stranded DNA that belongs to the Papillomaviridae family. We have so many types of HPVs However, not all of them are disease causing or not all of them are so harmful to our health. However, I would like to talk to you about this, these types. We have the high risks and the low risks. We often see that the high risks are the cancer causing ones. We call them oncogenic. These types are the 6, 18, 31, 33, 45, 52, 58. We also see that the low type, the low risk, I'm sorry, is the non-oncogenic, which means that they are not cancer causing, but they are really known for causing a lot of genital warts, and we are going to talk about that when we get to this side. The types under the low risk are six and 11. If you look on this part, you see that 90% cases of cervical cancers are caused by the high risks, which are these types of HPV, as I already mentioned. We have 90% cases of anal cancer in both male and females. We also have 90% cases of vulva cancer, definitely in females, 85% cases of vaginal cancer. When we look at the low risk, we see that 90% of all genital wards are caused by the low risk type of human papilloma virus. So um, one may ask, how will I know that I have HPV? And for that reason, I want to take some time out to talk to you about the signs and symptoms of the virus. We have the genital warts, which is like a cauliflower appearance in your genital area. If you see these warts growing, don't just take it for granted. Have yourself checked out. Go see your doctor, talk to your mom about it. Just seek some help. HPV is a virus. So since it's a virus, that means it actually involves the T cells, the cytotoxic T cells. This is the antigen. This is the lysosome. The cell is the, the, the cell or the is engulfing the antigen. The lysosome is now fusing with the phytosome. At this point here, the antigen is degraded due to the lysosome breaking it down. At this point here, some of the antigen is released from the cell using exocytosis. And at this point here, the epitope is displayed on the MHC class two cell. After this point here, we have the antigen presenting cell actually presents this cell to the helper T cells. 
the helper T cells then multiply, and then since it knows that a virus is involved, the helper T cells passes this epitope to the cytotoxic T cells. The cytotoxic T cells then multiply into daughter cells and memory cells, and it works in two ways. It does contact killing, or it releases some cytokines, which calls for more um, cells to come to destroy the cell. Okay, HPV affects numerous um, mucosal layers within our bodies. Um, but it affects the lining of the mouth, the throat, the respiratory tract, the anal genital epithelium, and the reproductive system, mainly the reproductive system. Because our diffuse lymphatic tissues, the malt, which is the mucosal associated lymphatic tissues, the gout, which is the bronchial associated lymphatic tissues, and the gout, which is our gastro associated lymphatic tissues, they're all affected due to this HPV virus. Class, does anyone know of any possible treatment of HPV? Okay, Angie, tell us about it. So I did some research on the treatments of HPV, and unfortunately, there is no cure for HPV or the virus itself. But um, there are treatments that can target the health problems that HPV can cause. Most HPV infections can be harmless or they can be resolved with no treatment. Um, health problems associated with HPV infection include genital warts, benignant respiratory tract tumors, precancerous changes in the cervix, and cancers. Okay, so there are also ways to prevent um, getting the infection. My mom is a nurse. And she says for the sexually active, which is not me, of course, mom, um, there are vaccines in the United States that prevent the infection um, in different types of HPV. Another way to prevent getting the infection is a way that most of you will like, which is abstinence or use of condoms before sexual intercourse. Well, if you did not practice abstinence and you are already infected with the virus, there are treatments for genital warts. Um, these treatments include the freezing of the wart, which is called cryosurgery, or you can use laser surgery, chemicals, or drugs to treat the warts. I'm just going to summarize by saying, you know that HPV is a virus that, that comes from the Papillomaviridae family. It affects the basal squamous epithelium cells that also affects the immune system and the reproductive system. You know, HPV has two categories, the high risk and the low risk. Some of the treatments for HPV is the vaccines and the pap smears. Okay, ladies, don't forget to get your pap smears once a year. Uh, some of the signs and symptoms are the warts of the genitals and the warts of the hands and the foot and cancer. Oh, and Yo, I don't think we should talk about oh, this. Come on, why not? People might misunderstand what we're trying to say, you know? No, but that's a part of life, okay? Thank you for watching our video. I hope you enjoyed it. Don't forget to practice abstinence and success.